This show is brought to you by Rotary International. Service above self. Welcome to a new show of Ahorn TV. We have two guests here, Uwe Hai. Hello. And Peter, hello. hello. So Uwe Ball is a film producer here in British Columbia. You've produced already 60 movies, I guess. No, I think more. 20, yeah. 20 or 21. But Holy two, smoke. Yeah, yeah. So over 20 movies. Yeah. And Peter, you are the president of the MPPIA, Motion Picture Producers Industry Association. Did I say it correctly? Yeah, Motion Picture Production Industry Association, correct. And the chair. Yes. You're, oh, you're the chair. The chair. And you are the manager of the, uh, the uh, North Shore Film Studios, the Boza Studios. The president of North Shore Studios and the Mammoth Studios. Mm -hmm. Great. So before we go into the nitty-gritty discussion about tax credits and uh, other topics which interest us as producers here in British Columbia, let's check out this film clip. I've worked in the film industry in BC for over 20 years. I didn't even enter the field until I was 50 years of age. And I had a wonderful 20 years. And right now, this industry is definitely in a rapid fall. William B. Davis, uh, known around the world as Cancer Man from the X-Files. Mm -hmm. The film industry in British Columbia, which has spawned huge numbers of films and television programs like the X-Files and many others, is in a state of serious decline. And it's a very simple reason. Uh, my name is John R. Taylor. Part of the problem is, or the, the problem is, that we do not have a level playing field with the rest of Canada right now. There are systems of tax credits that are given by government to encourage different industries and encourage the film industry. Recently, particularly the province of Ontario, but also the province of Quebec, have raised expenses that they will refund or reward or whatever. It, at any event, their tax credit uh, contribution to the industry has increased, ours has not. And if Christy Clark, our Premier, would understand that and work on our behalf right now, uh, what we need to do is have a long-term look with the rest of the jurisdictions. We are, we are suffering also because we've decided to abolish the HST, which is the um, refundable uh, tax that the film industry used to pay. So between these two financial issues, we no longer have a level playing field. The film industry is very sensitive to, uh, to margin and a huge number of productions have now moved to Ontario that used to be shot here. I mean, uh, Christy Clark's idea is that it's not working so she's not going to follow the other provinces. Well that's all well and good for her, but it puts the entire film industry here in peril and is going to uh, destroy it. So to save a few hundred million, she's going to lose a few billion. We're in danger of losing our infrastructure and, and, and our people, and uh, it's a tragedy. The revenue that is generated by the film industry, the economic activity that it creates, the, the, the ripple effect that it has through the economy, you have 27 to 30,000 people, 27,000 to 30,000 people in the film industry here in Vancouver. Every one of them gets a paycheck. That paycheck pays taxes. That paycheck buys other people's products and goods and services. If those 27 to 30,000 people are out of work, that entire economic ripple is gone. A first year student in economics learns these things. I am amazed that Christy Clark does not seem to understand that very basic economic premise. Now, Peter, this was an event which happened a week ago in your studios, and you organized it. How come? I mean, MPPIA, do you see yourself as a, as a face of the industry? Uh, well, you know, it was very interesting. We had planned the event for a week later. Um, it was going to be last week, but uh, we ended up moving it up to the week before because um, what happened was there was a grassroots movement called uh, you know, Save BC Film, and that's what generated the... 
uh, the buzz and the need to have it uh, earlier where we had 4,000 people attending. Now, I mean, this is a little bit ethic question, not ethic or uh, let's say a, a groundbreaking question, BC film. Do we have a BC, indigenous BC film industry or is it more a BC film services industry? Because it's all about film services, obviously, in this discussion. Well, in British Columbia, we have both. 80% um, of the business we do is the service work, which is the work that comes up from Hollywood or from Los Angeles. And the other 20% is our indigenous or BC-based uh, business where uh, smaller companies try and sell their films you know, globally. Yeah. Um, but it's been really struggling over the last number of years. We're seeing some pickup right now, but uh, um, you know, that industry is much stronger in provinces like Ontario. Mm -hmm. Before we get to that, you know, to Ontario and other provinces, uh, Uwe, uh, as we said in the beginning, you have produced now over 20 movies here in British Columbia. Have you actually um, taken advantage of, 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 this, of the tax incentives and did yeah, you of take course. advantage of that? Yeah, of course. Uh, the uh, first movie was 1999 and uh, my partner was in Los Angeles and they said, we are not shooting here, we're shooting in British Columbia. So this was in initially my first trip here. And, and so I loved it here. I love shooting here. I think uh, BC offers uh, uh, great crews, actors, like location. So you can fake New York here. You can, you can do a lot uh, uh, here. And mm. you can do like nature movies, uh, period piece movies. And I did all kind of genres. So it is a good spot uh, to shoot, but it also has to make financially sense. That means uh, loyalty is nice in a way, but you would move away from here if you wouldn't get the incentives uh, which you're getting right now. No, we moved away story. from here already. I shot uh, two movies in South Africa, I shot two movies in Croatia, I shot in Bulgaria and Romania and in Germany. So we, we actually shot seven of my last 12 movies not here. Uh, as he said also, in, in the end uh, the film industry um, is in a turn, like it's tougher to recoup money. The MGs, the minimum guarantees you get for your movies worldwide are shrinking. So the producers must look out to, to get the best possible deals and the cheapest labor uh, everywhere. So, so this is a reality. Is it cheap labor? I mean, whenever it comes to the discussion, unions and guilds, you think always of expensive, uh, expensive uh, salaries, expensive labor. What do you think? What well, you, you know, I think the labor rates are, are comparable to certainly other industries in British Columbia. The problem is, is that it's a very global industry here, and, and you are going to go where your dollar goes the furthest. So that only makes sense. I mean, the tax credits are a part of it. Uh, labor's a part of it. But, you know, this is, uh, you know, British Columbia is not an inexpensive place to, to do business. Um, you know, we think we get great value here. Um, but it's not inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Now, now those who, who came to this event to protest and uh, to listen to you and other filmmakers, um, they are probably all services production people or, or more, more union members. Yeah, I mean, um, most people that are engaged in the industry are usually do service work and they mm -hmm. may do indigenous work too. I mean, um, you know, it depends on what the opportunities come their way. But uh, certainly most of them in terms of the uh, skilled labor forces come up through the service side of the industry. Yeah. Now, before we coming uh, to to that point, where, where we don't actually have uh, a bigger percentage of indigenous production, we are on a standstill with the tax credit. Correct? Ontario is raising, we stay. Well, what happened is that's uh, number one. Is, is three years ago they raised their tax credits to levels that uh, British Columbia was unwilling to meet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taken a while for things to change in uh, Los Angeles, for instance, to get confident that this is the way to go because we had a great product, um, we provide good value, um, but now what's happening is they're expanding their infrastructure there, they're drawing some of our talent over there because they're attracting more of that production. Um, so we're finding like right now, um, we're 40% down over this time last year and the entire year looks potentially you know, like we could be significantly down, you know, maybe 25% over the whole year, um, which is not good for infrastructure or talent. Doesn't it signal to us that we actually have to uh, work much more on creating our own industry or indigenous industry? Or is there this, this hook with the networks? We've got approximately $1 billion worth of infrastructure that's been built up by the private sector 
over the last you know 15 years, including you know studios and equipment, etc. Um, so that uh, is completely, I would say, dependent, or for the most part, dependent on the service business. Um, you know, when you think about 80% of our business is mm. service business, you know, our studio would not exist um, with just Indigenous. I like the idea of transitioning that way, um, but it, to me it's a bit of a, it's, it's going to take uh, a number of years to get there. Mm. And it's, it's about really attracting the right talent, including, you know, the creative talent. So, how do you fit into all this? I mean, now, now, yeah, nowadays, because um, you work very strongly with uh, European funding, with European uh, private investors. Well, you're kind of in the middle right now, correct? As a as a producer, yeah, right? in the middle. I'm I'm basically uh, we do everything, right? Yeah. So we we make the movies and we sell the movies. So I'm very close to the market to to see what the market worldwide wants, and a lot of times uh, the different countries are not fitting together. You know, a lot of, for example, the Lifetime movies here, whatever, like this kind of movie of the week stuff, what, what gets produced in Vancouver, nobody wants it outside of US or yes. Canada, like nobody. You know, like this, this, this is the thing. The problem is that a lot of products, they fit in one country, so you have partly funding uh, uh, from, a, from a TV channel from US for something, what nobody else wants. So, and th this is for me as a producer, the biggest, the biggest problem right now, besides, of course, you want then more tax incentives and what, what, I, what I felt also it would be good to, for example, give the opportunity to private investors here in BC to invest in movies. But of course, they have to be able to deduct it from their personal income. Yeah. So I could find rich people in Vancouver that make a million bucks a year, and they put the million in the movie, and so they don't pay the 500,000 taxes anymore. So, and, and there is an opportunity to pump private capital into the movie industry, but you need like government support to, to help it. Now, what you just explained, isn't that the system we had up to the beginning of the year 2001, 2002, when we had the big crash in Germany regarding the tax, uh, regarding the... No, this uh, was 2005. Oh, 2005, 2005 in German, Germany stopped that tax yeah, exactly. law. But in Germany, it was handled completely wrong because you could spend that money anywhere. Oh. And then people in Germany, this was the reason the German government stopped it because all the way went to Hollywood. So that was yeah, a silly, all the money. silly money, money in Hollywood. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, yeah. and so what I think for BC would be, of course, you have to spend all the money in Here. BC mm what you want to deduct from taxes, you know, so you, whatever, let's say you have a $5 million movie and you have a $1 million you, uh, LA actor flying in, but the $4 million getting spent completely in Vancouver, Vancouver crew, Vancouver facilities, that $4 million, that investor can write off. Well, it, it, it could certainly work. I mean, that's one of the models. I mean, I mean, certainly the government is still effectively paying out that money because it's money they would have collected otherwise. Um, and you want to make sure that there's enough controls in place to make sure that you know you're making movies that are are viable movies. I mean that you know we want these movies to be commercially successful if we're going to build a successful industry. It can't be just um, somebody that has a, a dream about making a, a particular movie. It's no. Now, okay, Ontario has a tax that their tax credit on the whole budget. Is that right? Twenty five percent or something. Like the that. majority of it. Um, they've got not only a labor based credit, yeah. but they've got a la they've got a. Uh, credit based on, on all spend, which is everything else that they purchase. Yes. Some things are excluded, but a lot of it's It's quite substantial. No? Yeah, but look at uh, Louisiana. They have, I think, 45% on everything. Well, who they give on? you 45% back on Nicolas Cage if he gets 10 million bucks. But Louisiana is a stupid system, right. and they will lose tons and tons and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and I, I don't think BC should duplicate this, yeah. but it should be still fair, and you have to have some let's say kickers you know like the, the producers especially look i live here i want to shoot here yeah i'm not but eager to go shoot? to bulgaria yeah. but at the same time uh, it's in a way my money what i use so i have to be very careful and but let's say you sit in los angeles why you should shoot here right now mm. you have to be completely an idiot to shoot here you have to go you go to ontario because you get more money explain right so it's like why if, if you see it completely unemotional you go there explain where, for all viewers i've got to make sure he doesn't talk to my clients <laughs> <laughs> okay let, let's let's just quickly explain uh, a producer coming up here from la one reason are the tax credits the other reason should have been the exchange rate which is very bad in a certain way for americans right so that is already gone what about this, um, uh, the, the HST thing, HST, GST, PST? 
Do you want to quickly explain? Is that also something which affects the American producer, if you would come well, up? Well, certainly with the dollar at par. When the dollar was well below par, um, and we had to pay PST on film inputs, not including labor, because it doesn't attract PST, but other inputs, um, it, was, uh, it wasn't that big a deal. But now that the dollar is on par, it becomes quite significant. So for a, a television series, for instance, it works out to close to $30,000 additional per episode that they'll have to pay when the PST comes back. Mm -hmm. And this is network, one hour network television. Um, so it is significant when the dollar's at par and our tax credits are less than they are in Ontario. Um, so it's really come into focus and it's an important thing for us uh, to get an exemption on PST like other manufacturers do. We're specifically excluded from that. Um, but I'm not so sure that's going to happen because they've, the government says they're having to bring it back exactly the way it went out. Mm -hmm. The thing is this, it's, it's like historically, uh, film was <coughs> always kind of a subsidy industry mm. you know you of course you have like whatever let's say 24 with key for Sutherland whatever made tons and tons and tons of money but the overall average it's like nine out of ten movies lose money and they only survive or the producers only survive because they have kind of soft money in the budget 30 percent here 30 percent there and in Europe you know it it's all yeah. about like subsidies like what we have here with telefilm is in Europe all over the place and like in Germany alone they spend 500 million every year in euro to subsidize movies where the producer just sends a script in and gets two million euro back but how do they so subsidize and, wow. no, with tax money like with Funding. yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, not, not with not with private equity like no, no, with, no, no. with real with, with government taxpayers funding. government money yeah so yeah, and the only thing you have to do there is to convince a committee of six people and you basically have your film produced mm. so and and this is here in uh, uh, because telefilm is not so big they have not so much money so it's it's just very tough as Canadian producer to just get like let's say 10 million together for a real good worldwide selling action movie where you have a four million dollar actor in like like Jason Stessem or whatever it's just al almost impossible mm -hmm. so the key coming back to that initial thing like with private investors you could convince them you can sell that movie worldwide and then people, private investors, they, they think, okay, why not investing in that movie? Because now the normal telefilm movie is an art house movie who plays at the Whistler Film Festival and nobody gives a shit about it. You know, so this is the reality. And, but you have the same problem in Germany where like 120 German movies every year yeah. getting subsidized. But we get the 10, they make actually money, everybody talks about, but the 110 are like, unusable because they are just like what you said like a guy has a dream and makes his first movie or whatever you know like and and we only hear in the mass media the success stories but what is with all the failures there is like money spent in an idiotic way because it, it doesn't help anybody it, you cannot as a government or as a nation you cannot support film is too expensive to be just art but, so. but, but tell me uh, isn't it an educational aspect here that film producers, or they call themselves filmmakers, uh, do not have enough knowledge of the markets. There are a lot of filmmakers who are probably really good, but they cannot sell their movies. And then there's this rule also, which you just mentioned is one in 10, right? Uh, but the distributor on the markets, doesn't he go on the market and say, okay, if you want to have this movie, you have to buy the other nine. No, but, but so, so what you, what you say, you bring, you have uh, various uh, points, but I think the main point, what you just said is totally true that all subsidized movies yeah. and in that committees are never people that actually sell movies. You know, like whatever, <laughs> that you, you, could, you, you should go to a world sales company, like my, my company is a world sales company, we are all in the markets yeah. right now in Berlin, so, and then we, then we could analyze the script and the cast and could say that movie will make a hundred thousand bucks worldwide all in, or it has a chance to make three million. So, and then they could decide, yes, that movie should exist or Exactly, not. yeah. Yeah, but it's not existing because that kind of subsidy committees are normally kind of more from the arty world and they don't care about the commercial subsidy success. Subsidy committee, give an example, you're talking about National Film Board, CMF. Uh, Telefilm, this stuff. All these, all these, these uh, Heritage Canada. Um, I think if we're talking about an industry here that's sustainable, you're going to have to have 
globally successful commercial films. Yeah. You know, but I think the general idea to look a little more into the marketability, like that, that, that it's commercial interesting yeah. to do something, I think is very important. And if you at, want to attract private investors, it's only the factor. Yeah. You know, yeah. why somebody should invest in anything uh, if you cannot show him this actor has similar box office success or this kind of genre is working normally or pre-sales that you actually say look five countries are sold you know and this is how we make our movies now yeah. wait a minute you, you so so you actually finance right now your movies through pre-sales yeah, which, only. which yeah, yeah but only. That, but that's very very uh Nowadays, very seldom, isn't it? I mean, uh, yeah, I know, but I made in, in total 30 movies, and yeah. there were like also big studio movies in, included. So, so I you have, have the contact record. that yeah. I say, look, now I do this. What can you give me for yeah. it? A young yeah. filmmaker can't do that. No, uh, no pre-sales at all. No, I mean they have to connect. Actually, now we're talking about it. They have to go th the whole way, the whole 90, 90 yards uh, through funding and networks, correct? And they are not here. The networks, that's that's fact. They're in Ontario. Yeah. Is that one of the reasons why why it makes it, it then so easy not to build up an indigenous film industry? Well, I think that's certainly a, an additional challenge because yeah. when we want to go have coffee with that broadcaster, it's a flight to Toronto um, right now. But, yes, there's a big problem. Um, but I think, you know, I think in all the education programs now, it should be talking about how am I going to sell this movie? I mean, obviously, you, you can't get this kind of experience overnight, but um, you have to engage... Uh, the distributor in the process. Yes, uh, because if you don't, because I mean, look at how the world's changing. Totally. Um, so if you don't do that, um, the odds of you being successful are very, very limited. You know, like I made 30 movies here as an example. And you think I got one invitation so far to the Vancouver Film Festival? As an, I give you only that example. It's like the Vancouver Film Festival is like the film festival of a 10,000 people, small town in Eastern Europe. You know, they just don't, like, they're not commercial. Like, they, they show they're, movies, they're nobody intellectual cares, school. old whatever. Yeah, yeah, but it's wrong. Yeah. It's a wrong approach, you know, and nothing fits together. And this is why, why I think also, oh, another subject is in France, for example, around 15, 20% of the screens need to be French movies playing, always. Yeah, but, you they, know, like, yeah, but yeah. they have that on telefilm. They have that on telefilm no, and, wait, and some networks. No, 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 I talk about movie theaters. You know, when I made, we talked about my bailout yeah, movie, yeah, about exactly. the financial crisis, what yeah. will now get only one a release in New York City. But it's shot here, and it's, it's BC content, right? So why it's, for example, Scotia Bank Theatre or whatever, right? Mm. They should have one screen always playing Canadian movies by government rules. This is in France effect. 15% of the screens in mm. France must play French movies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. and this is the reason the French movies, are, a lot of times they make millions of, of visitors because people have time to have word of mouth so, coming. So government it's, is helping to bring the movie into no, the theater. No, absolutely, but there's only a few thoughts, you know, like when, but when you think about making, for example, I totally agree. It's what, like the music industry, right? Yeah. Where you're forced no. to play certain Canadian content. Yeah, uh, uh, all right, so, so as, a, as a summary, we should uh, train our filmmakers to look more into the onto the distribution side to understand how the market works. I thank you guys for I thank you too for being here, and I thank you uh, viewers uh, for watching us. And please don't forget to like us on uh, Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And we've got of course our website www.ahontv.com. Uh, click click on there, and uh, you will find them this clip uh, soon uh, on that site. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.